let the sun go down. You're listening to the BBC, the Broken Brit- Biscuit Company, and it's Andy, and we're live until two. We are road tripping next. Service! On BBC iPlayer. Your temper is... Oh, it's tense, isn't it? Andy Bennett. BBC Radio Somerset. Let's go on a road trip, shall we? I'm going to meet up with Steve Apet from Long Sutton, who is a... It's a two-part interview. He's a really nice guy. He used to work for Butlins as a red coat bit of an actor and he does entertainment street entertainment does these big events and he's got this wonderful bike that he's converted with pipes all over it and bubble machines and smoke and spinning umbrellas and little cogs it's all very steampunk which is all very in at the moment isn't it and he goes out and he does all these great events and he he's just a bit of an inventor he's like Caractacus Potts I think I called him in this in this chat uh, so let's uh, let's have a little listen Uh, when I went down to his workshop, which is just like a little magic showroom almost, because he's a bit of a magician as well. And he's got a link to a famous magician, which you'll hear in just a minute. So here's part one of two of my chat with Steve Apex. Hi, Andy. Nice to see you. And you, you've had such an interesting life, and it sounds like I'm reading your obituary, but you've you've done so many things. I'm sort of going to do it in a timeline, because we're going to get to the crazy bike behind a little bit later. Uh, But essentially now you are a a street performer, if that's the correct term, and you've been involved very much in theatre and theatre companies, but... Life started as a red coat. Yeah, so I go back, oh gosh, back in, uh, I suppose, the 80s, and uh, I left school with not many qualifications, um, and I found myself abroad because of one thing that um, I, I have German parents and I could speak German, so I, I sort of spent a lot of time in Austria. But then I came back to the UK, and I must have been about 23 or so. And I just wanted to work at Butlins. I just yeah. always wanted to be a red coat. A lot of famous people did, didn't yeah. they? Like oh, absolutely. Shane Ritchie mm. did, was a red coat in Breen mm. near Burnham on Sea, and he, he always, that's my hometown, and, and he always he talks about that in his book. I mean, when I was there, uh, we had a young person who was sort of uh, not quite the age to be a red coat who kept helping us, and it was Stephen Mullen. He did mine, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, and that's why I was. Yeah, and he sort of helped out, and he was always sort of keen to do things, and yeah. he became a red coat, and yeah. very nice chap. He wanted particularly to go to Germany. I spent many a year in Germany, and I took his first magic show across to Germany, and he had a tour of the forces, the oh, really? uh, army camps yeah. in Germany, and I just sort of road managed for him. So you're very modest, but technically he'd, he'd be nothing without you. Yes. He'd be nothing without you, Stephen <laughs> Mulhern. You made him what he is. Well, you can see he's got on really well, yeah. and I'm still here. <laughs> no, you're doing, no, you're doing great, though, because uh, we'll get to what you do uh, in just a bit. So how long were you a red coat? Yeah, so I spent about four years being a yeah. red coat, but, and then I left. Everything, like comedy, introducing, hosting? Everything. Yeah, mainly hosting, running some of the stages, obviously doing some of the bingo and meet and greets and different it's things bingo, like that. Isn't it? <laughs> always the same um never very good at singing that was my only downfall so when i actually left then quite a few of my sort of fellow red coats they all said oh you know gonna go off and do a sort of a song and dance theater or whatever and i i just found myself oh i don't quite know what to do and i started to form some theater companies and uh, i was lucky enough to get a few tv parts as well You've done a bit of actoring, so yeah. what, like, as an extra or as an actual actor, um, what would you say? You yeah, did? small parts. A claim to fame, I suppose, was a couple of weeks for Discovery up in Scotland as a, I don't know, like a caveman. You played <laughs> a caveman? Yeah. Unscripted, but we spent all yeah. that time up there. Um, the funniest thing was that I'm vegetarian and I've always <laughs> been vegetarian and they, they gave us all these robes and all sorts of odd things and we had to eat meat or pretend to eat meat. <laughs> various bits and they flew us up and looked after us really, really yeah. well. And the very first Harry Potter film, mainly it was sort of an extra role. They asked me to go up to London for a day. I re- always remember it was on a Sunday. Obviously I didn't know the film and what it was no. going to be in, in the future, you know. And I got there, one of the 80s said, oh, you're going to be the barrel boy, the veggie person, you know, yeah. with your barrel. Yeah. I thought, oh, well, that sounds quite nice. I've had a few people say, blimey, we've seen you on... Because you can actually see me on the very first film with my fruit with and veg fruit barrel. And <laughs> oh, do you and, know what? Uh, So I'm walking down Duggan Alley. Goodness knows why, but a few people have asked me to sign... Really? Yeah, honestly, I've had... Through the post, I've had some really, really 
fans who are just so fanatic oh, yeah, that they've sent me a picture of the yes. screenshot and they of me to... and they want a little signature. That's great though, isn't it? Yeah. And also Harry Potter is such a phenomenon, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's self-sustaining now, it's yeah. so popular. In amongst the TV and the theatre, where did the street performing, and I'm going to get to the bike very soon because I'm really keen to talk about it, how did you end up doing the street performing and those sort of characters and the making of things? Mm. Okay, I suppose that came as I and and uh, a lovely lady Sue Squires and uh, Kerry Seymour, a few of us, we, we formed a theatre company. We became a resident company at Bridgewater Arts Centre, actually, um, for quite a few years. And uh, we started to produce little shows, in-house shows, and then touring shows. We did an awful lot of schools and little yeah. theatres, arts centres, touring with some very, very funny children's shows with with yeah. lots of participation and silliness and then i can always remember i think arabella churchill yeah. who was one of the founders that was of the glass library like, she saw one of the shows and she said oh you must bring it to one of the big top children's festivals yeah. that i do we're going to put it into one of the big tops and, and we had at the time we had a, a puppet trailer that we used to tow around so the, yeah. the trailer had many little doors and little puppets coming out of it and then we were characters running around the trailer and it was all a whole big backstage setup and then she said i'm going to give you glastonbury in the theatre yeah. and circus area so back in 2000 was our very first time she said come along to glastonbury and we created some street theatre and that's about that's the right. beginning of the street theatre for me and and obviously i worked with those other people for a few years and then i've started creating it on my own ever since steve apel lovely chap we got part two of that chat coming up after Bruce. Born to run. If you're on the M5 today, around junction 25 for Taunton, it takes you out of the A358 for the 303. M5 both directions, traffic is being temporarily held. We'll keep you updated. But just one to be aware of you going north or south on the M5 around Taunton 25. And one lane blocked and there's queuing traffic due to an accident on the M4 westbound. That's at junction 19 to get on to the M32 for Bristol. There's three lanes, one of them is blocked due to an accident. Again, we'll keep you updated. Back now with my chat with Steve Apet who is a street entertainer. And as you heard from part one, he's done a lot of things, a bit of extra work, a bit of acting. He's a street entertainer and he's got this wonderful little workshop full of just gadgets and things that he makes to entertain the crowds at the events that he goes to. We're outside of your workshop and inside there, it's very hard to describe on radio, but it, it's a bike. The back end of the bike is sort of a normal bike. The front end has got two wheels. It's not just a single wheel. And it's about, I don't know, three foot wide, maybe. Maybe a bit wider, probably four. Maybe, oh, you'll know. Yeah. And it, it looks like something out of Chitty Bang Bang in that Caractacus Potts has made it because <laughs> it's all painted up in copper. Yeah. And it's got like a, a spring, twisty spring and bits of hoses and little spoons that spin round and like bubble machine and a kettle on the front and you cycle it round and it's, it looks like an inventor's bicycle. I suppose it is, yeah. I was always looking for something that a little bit unique. I'm not a very good stilt walker and I'm not a very good juggler and all of these street theatre pieces I wasn't that good at but I created interesting pieces I don't know little outdoor scenarios yeah. and that sort of worked and then I thought one day I think I was in Bristol at the time and I was walking past and, and this chap just was pedalling an ordinary bicycle yeah. and he had like a ghetto blaster yeah. thing a bit yeah. like you, you showed me one earlier on yes, that you yes, made oh, for yeah. the carnival yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah and he just had it strung over his shoulder and I thought well actually I wonder how I could work with that and, yeah. and make something a bit better so the bike that you're describing which is in my workshop um, where we are today is built on a Pashley frame yeah. Uh, Pashley are one of the few British manufacturers of bicycles still. Yeah. And I started just building, and this is about the fourth version. Oh, is it? You've, of, you've sort of, of tweaked it and yeah. added it. And... and I built a carnival type bike mm -hmm. with lots of ribbons and colour. And then I created a hippie bike in the sense that I'm a uh, sort of a hippie and that goes still to Glastonbury. It was there this year. Yeah. And then I think, I don't know. 
five years ago, I started to think about the steampunk look. That's the word I was looking for, and steampunk. that's what it is. That's the yeah. word. I couldn't get my head yeah. around it. Steampunk. And I saw you with this at the Bath and West show this year. That's right. You were in costume as well. It's all part of it. It's all it's all theatre, darling, you know? Yeah, I think I think there's more to than just peddling up yeah. and around. So I get booked at, at, at venues all over the UK. And I, I travel all over. You were in Scotland the other day, weren't you? Near Scotland. I've been to... I have actually nearly been abroad because I've been to the Isle of Wight. <laughs> uh, I haven't actually... Physically, um, yeah. I got a tentative booking next year for Jersey, so I'm nice. thinking that would be nice. Yeah. Down to Cornwall and Kent and, and in the Midlands a lot. As a piece, I get booked for the fact that I'm a time traveller in the eye of a small child yeah. who comes running up to me. I tell time travelling stories that there's bubbles coming out of the bike, there's yeah. silly sounds yeah. coming out of it. And such a following. The little ones just, just go mad over it. It really appeals. And then as part of my time travelling stories, I'll jump off and create some big bubbles as well. So there's sort of... That's right, I remember the big bubble, that, that, that rope where you dip it in and you make a giant bubble. Yeah. Street theatre's massively popular now. It's always been popular in London when you go to Covent Garden, there'll be that guy that's sat on... The, he looks like he's holding a spade and he's sat on nothing, that type of thing, you know. And yeah. Street theatre now, at festivals, it's huge. Even one-day festivals and even sometimes just at your one smaller, smaller one-day events. That type of entertainment is very popular because you bring the entertainment to them. You meander around. Everyone can stop and look at and have a photo and get involved. And I imagine there's got to be a reasonable amount of confidence to get that out and just go out there and do it. You, you know, not everyone could do that. Yeah, I, I think it, it. Again, it's something that I've done all my life, so it's easy for me. You know, the moment I, I wheel the bike out to the back of the van and I yeah. build some of it because it has to be slightly taken apart to fit in um, and then away I go you know you do put on your character adults will talk to me about how I've built it and, yeah. and the, the yeah. fascination they of it, how you did it yeah. um, and then they'll 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 tag the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or the, the yeah. as you said Chichi Chichi Bang Bang look to it's it that and he's there you've yeah. got that you know and you built that and all of that and then the little kids just they get drawn into the whole thing and I'll I, I'll tell them I'll fly you know so that's another little sort of spoof that I'll say I'll, if, if I pick up 88 point something three miles an yeah, hour yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't remember exactly what the, the future is the future was yeah. but you know I will miles fly an hour. And, and they'll be watching me forever yeah. going around and they'll they'll come I had a little child the other day who sort of oh and they've got some maps in the back and we look at the maps where I've been to and I tell them stories and I do magic tricks as well from the countries that I've supposedly flown to and you know they'll come and tag me on the back and they'll say oh have you been to france yet and and yeah. you know they, what was it like and my auntie lives over there or something and that's you know. great isn't it they, yeah. there's nothing wrong with a bit of fantasy let's have exactly. a let's have a look at it where we're at let's have a okay. wander in so Andy, it's 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 got bubbles coming out of it there's sort of bubbles in the yeah. front <laughs> that's all that's great isn't it and it's, it's, it's got uh, funny sound so uh, <laughs> I see the old, the old breaking wind sound effect. No, can't go wrong with that. That's good. And that's that's my running sound. So um, that sound when good. when I start yeah. off, it's, I'm, it's very I'm going along with that type of sound. It's very um, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, mm. isn't it? And important to say, you've made this yourself. You don't buy these. You are no. you create these. Mm. Mm. You're a builder of things. Yeah, you just are, scrap. And you've got a bit of a shower head here, yeah. painted up copper, and crocodile clips on some on some copper piping, and you sort of fit the bubble machine, and you've got these spoons that spin round. It's our dinner plate. My wife got cross with me. That's a, that's a dinner plate. <laughs> that's a dinner plate, yeah. And, and that was our, from our lounge. I was using a lampshade. <laughs> lampshade. Oh, it is. All oh, right. <laughs> and that was the boiler. That's how it started. Oh, right. So the boiler at home broke down. Yeah. And that was the that initial was the first bit. I took that and thought, what can I do to it? But I've seen you at events doing it, and you can tell you love it, and the, the, the crowd also love it. Is it seasonal then? Do you have a season where you are street performing? Is the winter yeah. quiet, or is it um, depend on who books you for what event and stuff? So I started this year in April. I was quite a bit in Wales and in the Midlands at some yes. early children's festivals. There was one or two indoors as well. It's quite a lot of town centres at the beginning spring events. Yeah, the town like that, where they, they launch their yeah, come back out and 
exactly. get some footfall in. And obviously, being southwest, you know, Glastonbury's only up the road, so that's your local one. And that's nice. um, done that for quite a while. And then it then it sort of I, I worked through two lovely agents, so that, oh, that's right. how I get my bookings. Yeah. And then it went very much into the agricultural type shows. I had quite a few town centre ones through the sort of the month of August into yeah. the beginning of September. Then I've got a bit of a lull, a little bit of Halloween. So for Halloween, I go over to Ascot. So I'll, I'll play some spooky... You can actually play music through yeah. the bike as well, play a bit of spooky music, and then I dress it a little bit halloween And then for Christmas, an awful lot of bookings, and I become the elf on the <laughs> Christmas flying bubble delivery bike. <laughs> so you can adapt so, it to everything. Yes, yes so there's the bits of elf, uh, elfing, yeah. if you look around, there's bits of elfing around here, and that will all change. The bike will change with Christmas presents yeah. popping out the back and all of that. In your workshop here, you know, you look around, you've got, like, foam dice and giant hula hoops and top hats and... You know, like a big oversized pocket watch and yeah. sunflowers and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And I, I want to call you an inventor. I do. I know I, that's not what you put. Yeah, you know, you've got, someone's got to come up with these ideas. Sure. So there's all sorts of odd little things here. And, and I think I've really settled now on these bikes. Yeah. And I think that is my this is your thing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see anyone else doing what you're doing, which exactly. is great. Exactly. This sort of steampunk bicycle feel. Is massively unique and people want different. Uh, they do, yeah. Good to catch up with you. Bless you. Thank, thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for letting me look round the workshop yeah. and look at oh. the bike. Oh, it was lovely to see you and thanks for coming over to this little farm hideaway this little, this in little, Long you, Sutton. You, you've never known what goes on <laughs> what in here. Goes, no, that's true. That's true. Behind number three door. Really nice guy. Steve Apelt, who is like an event street entertainer. And his bike was incredible, the, the amount of work that went into it. And he's got all these oversized props and weird and wonderful things. You can find him on the Facebook, Steve A. Pell Productions. See the pictures. Let's get it.